Hello everyone, I'm Faye Fox and welcome to this week's episode of Spring Hill Now. See how students are cleaning up around campus, learn about new classes for the fall 2023 semester and events happening around Mobile. We'll also cover weather and what's happening in the world of Badger sports, all in this episode of Spring Hill Now. After a week long of campaigning, debates and voting, SGA presidential candidates Daniel Hadley and Nate Ojeda continue to prepare for a second election after announcements were made that a run runoff would be held between the two. Peyton Horkovy has the story. The Spring Hill College Student Government Association had officially declared a runoff election after voting results on March 25th revealed no paired president and vice president candidates received a required 50% of all votes. The runoff election will be held March 31st and is open and encouraged for all students to cast their votes. Presidential candidates Daniel Hadley and Nate Ojeda shared their own thoughts on the runoff election. My thoughts are that it's an opportunity to talk to more students and a chance to more clearly understand the issues facing this campus. I'm extremely grateful to each and every one of you for the opportunity to make the Hill a better place for all students. Current SGA President Lu Li Tunyun said having students vote immediately puts them in a position of influence. Yeah, so we're really thankful for all the support um, in getting us to this point in the process. Um, Courtney and Joe had a great campaign and we're really looking forward to competing against Nate and Allie for another week. Tunyun hopes to see the newest elects strengthen their relationship with the student body through truly showing students that their concerns are being heard and addressed. SHC's very own Kevin Abel said there were 442 students who had cast a ballot during the March 25th election. Final voting ballots will be sent out to students on March 31st, so stay on the lookout for that email, Badgers. Here to tell you that your vote matters, I'm Peyton Horkovy reporting for SHC Student Media. For more information on SGA and the SGA candidates, visit their official Instagram page. Greenkeepers is an environmental honor society at SHC and members of this club work toward keeping Mobile clean, starting with Spring Hill College campus. Reporter Samantha Brousseau has the story. This is what the fairway apartments typically look like after almost any weekend. Members of Greenkeepers hope to inspire others to clean up after themselves and work together to make SHC the campus that students deserve. A big reason that we haven't been doing a lot of campus cleanups this semester is because we were doing them like every other week and it just kept getting messier and messier. So that's something that we would like students to be more aware of is making sure that trash goes into the waste receptacles and that uh, the burden isn't placed on just a certain uh, mem certain members of the campus community that want to make this campus a little more beautiful place, but rather let's make this a community effort to make Spring Hill a more beautiful place. Although Greenkeepers may not be very well known around campus, it is not a new club. It has been around for years but fell under the radar around the same time that COVID-19 shut down campus in March 2020. SHC sophomore Jack Robinson claims to have never heard of Greenkeepers until recently. Maybe if we can get some like announcements in the CAF or emails to show how we can support or volunteer, that would be a good way to get it going. Stud plans to partner with SHC's Student Government Association in the future to increase involvement and productivity. All Spring Hill students are welcome to join Greenkeepers. The amount of time you dedicate to the club is completely up to you, but your participation is greatly appreciated. This is Samantha Brousseau, keeping it clean for SHC Student Media. For more information or to ask any questions regarding the club, contact Joseph Stude or visit Greenkeeper's Instagram. The Department of Mathematics and Computer Science is offering three new courses this fall. Computer Science Foundations is a 100-level starter course. This class introduces algorithmic thinking and problem solving with a focus on functional programming. This course will also review the fundamentals of programming. The data structure class will give students the tools to work in a dynamic field. Students will understand how to optimize codes and build efficient programs. Operating systems give students the chance to go through real-world experience and participate in hands-on exercises to explore how computers work. You will learn how to build an operating system from scratch and gain other skills that prepare students for future job opportunities. Each class requires a prerequisite or instructor's permission. You can register for the fall through May 29th. If you have any questions about the new computer science courses, you can email Dr. Pallet or Becky Shirley at their emails. 
Prepare your taste buds. On April 19th, Campus Ministry is hosting a jambalaya lunch from 11 to 1.30 p.m. This lunch will take place in Gautrelay, and tickets must be purchased to enjoy this Cajun dish. Tickets are $8 for students and $10 for faculty. All proceeds support the International Service Immersion Program that is held each year. Tickets can be purchased through Campus Ministry at their office on the second floor of the Student Center. For more information, contact Campus Ministry through their email. You can also follow their Instagram page to stay updated on upcoming events. That's all for things happening around the Hill. Now we go to reporter Samantha Gonzalez to see how weather is going to treat Mobile this week. Samantha? Thanks, Faye. This week we'll be back and forth with rainy and sunny days. Today is a nice and sunny day. The high is 75 and the low is 61. There's only a 5% chance of rain with winds coming in at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Friday, we've got some clouds moving into the area, but expect only a 24% chance of rain. The high will be 79 and the low will be 70. Winds will be coming in at around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Saturday, the rain will move its way back into our area. We've got a 61% chance of rain with possible thunderstorms. Temperatures move into the 80s with a high of 81 and a low of 60. Winds will be in at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's take a closer look at our extended forecast. Looking ahead, the temperatures stay pretty warm, only going up to the 80s. The rain will also be bouncing back and forth for the rest of the week. Here one day and gone the next. That's all for this week's weather. Back to you, Faye. Thanks, Samantha. Looks like weather is warming up just in time for spring break. Now let's pass it to reporter Natalie Williamson filling in for Maddie Bauck to see what's happening around the town. Natalie? Thanks, Faye. Starting March 31st through April 2nd, the USS Alabama Battleship is hosting the Springs Boat Show on the Bay. The Boat Show on the Bay is a three-day event packed with boats, shopping, and rides for the kids, plus activities, concerts, a fishing tournament, and more. Tickets are $10 for a single day, $25 for a three-day pass, and $75 for a VIP experience. On March 31st, the show will start at 12 p.m. and end at 6 p.m. April 1st, the show begins at 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. And on April 2nd, you can enjoy the event from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. All tickets will be sold online through the Eventbrite website. For more information, visit the Boat Show on the Bay website. You can also check out their Facebook page to view photos, videos, and stay up to date on the event schedule. In light of Autism Acceptance Month coming up in April, Mobile is hosting a month-long virtual run, walk, and bike to help raise funds for all autism charities. Starting April 1st through the 30th, you can help the cause. Being a virtual event, you can choose the scenery to your liking. There is plenty of different options when registering for this event. People of all ages are encouraged to take their part in raising autism awareness in the community. For more information or to register, visit the Run Sign Up website. Be sure to share a photo of you and your crew on social media supporting Autism Acceptance Month and use the hashtag, hashtag AutismAcceptanceAL. The 34th Annual Baldwin County Strawberry Festival is coming back April 8th and 9th. This event is hosted by a nonprofit organization and all of the money raised goes back towards the community. Each year, the festival raises about $48,000 to help benefit the Loxley Elementary School and the ARC Baldwin County Incorporated. There will be games for children to play along with arts and crafts area. This event is family friendly and features live music with plenty of food vendors to satisfy your hunger. There will also be a free shuttle service provided from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. both days. The shuttle will pick up those attending the Baldwin County Board of Education. This event will take place at the Municipal Park in Loxley, Alabama. For more information on the 34th Annual Baldwin County Strawberry Festival, visit their website. You can also visit their Facebook page to view photos, stay up to date with the event, and more. That's all for events happening around the town. Have a great and safe spring break, Badgers. You're watching Spring Hill Now, winner of the 2021 Catholic Media Awards Student Journalism Award for current events affecting student life. Now we go to reporter Nick Watts to talk Badger sports. Nick? Thanks, Faye. Looks like it was a great week for some of our Badgers. Let's see how they did. This past Saturday, the Spring Hill College baseball team swept Kentucky State in a doubleheader at home. 
The win allowed the Badgers to improve their record to 13-4 and in SIAC and 15-12 and overall. This past Saturday, the Lady Badgers softball team defeated Miles College 7-1 in the first game of the doubleheader. The Badgers dominated the Golden Bears 13-3 in Game 2, allowing the Badgers to remain undefeated in the SIAC. The Badgers honored the 25th anniversary of the softball program, including first pitch from former head coach Kobe Mackin. Spring Hill College track and field's John Abate won his second straight high jump while Grant Nastasi broke the men's 100-meter program record on Saturday at the Montevallo Falcon Classic. The Spring Hill College men's tennis swept the University of Health Sciences and Pharmacy at St. Louis. Seems like they come, couldn't come up with a cure to stop our Badgers as it was 7-0 this past Monday. As for our women's tennis team, they couldn't seem to come out on top and were defeated by Southern Arkansas 7-0. The Spring Hill College Sandy Badgers fell to number 4 Florida State 3-0, Texas A&M, and Corpus Christi 3-0 at the Tiger Beach Bash this Sunday. Let's see who our Badgers will play next. The men and women's tennis team will play at Lemoyne Owen on March 30th. Men and women's track and field will travel to Hattiesburg for the Southern Mississippi Invitational. And baseball will host Lane on April 1st. And this is no April 1st joke, I tell you this, when Spring Hill Ultimate Club will be hosting its first ever tournament on campus on April 1st at 9.15. That's all for Badger Sports. As always, go Badgers. Back to you, Faye. Thanks, Nick. Best of luck to our athletes as they prepare for their upcoming events. That's all for this episode of Spring Hill Now. Remember, you can get Spring Hill Now content on demand at livestream.com slash springhillcollege and on our student media website, newswire.shc.edu. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to stay connected. You can also email us at shcstudentmedia at gmail.com and look for the latest edition of the Spring Hillian coming out this week. From all of us at Spring Hill Now and Badger Television, have a safe and fun spring break.